Potato Queens is supported by Blue Apron, the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash queen. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait, y'all. That's blueapron.com slash queen. Two Dope Queens is supported by Movement Watches, the company started by two broke college kids that wanted to wear stylish watches but couldn't afford them. Style shouldn't break the bank, and starting at $95, Movement gives you a classic design and a quality constructed watch. Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to MVMT.com queen. Join the movement today. Hey, y'all. Don't forget that there is a challenge on the table for all of you listeners out there. We need 250 of you to step up and become monthly sustaining members of the show. That means you chip in just a little bit each month to make this show possible. $5, $10, whatever. If we hit that goal, we're going to get an extra $25,000 from the people at the Tao Foundation. Now, y'all, that's a lot of money, and it will make a huge difference to our work. So what the hell are you waiting for? Go to tutoqueens.org slash donate and give as little as five bucks a month. Or, even easier, just text the word QUEEN to 69866 for a super fast way to support what we do. You just got to do it by June 30th, so let's jump to it, y'all. Time is ticking. Okay, Phoebe, Yep. serious question. Which Nicolas Cage would you bone? Oof. Like Family Man Nicolas Cage, Raising Arizona Nicolas Cage... Ghost Rider exclusively. LOL. Just kidding, just kidding. Okay. That was a nightmare. <laughs> How does it feel to have all that evil inside of you? There are very few movies that I've walked out on. Ghost Rider was one of them. Please get me out of here! I love the, like, Nicolas Cage from, like, Leaving Las Vegas. Even though he plays, like, a really sad alcoholic in it, he was, like, kind of hot in it. I was like, well, this is intense. My wife left me because I started drinking. But fuck it anyway. I like Moonstruck. I lost my hand! Okay, I I like that. I mean, what about, like, Con Air? Great movie. Why couldn't you put the bunny back in the box? I mean, with the long hair, like, he had a weave in. Before it was, like, cool for white dudes to wear weaves, you know? Don't call it hair a weave. <laughs> it was a weave. What do you call it? Extensions? That's just, like, what white people say to, like, separate it from, like, weave is black culture and extensions is white people. It's like, no, you wear a fucking weave. Oh, yeah. He had, like, a mullet weave. Yeah. So natural. It's really good. It's really wispy. I think City of Angels is, like, peak Nicolas Cage for me. What's the cutoff? I think I would cut it off at Captain Corelli's Mandolin, because that was fucking bullshit. (laughs) Yeah, that movie was egg. (laughs) It's like he had a boo-boo, like, Italian accent. It was just, like, not a good look. And that would be a disaster. It's going to be a no for me, dog. Hashtag Randy Jackson. (laughs) It's the queen. You know what that means. It's me, Phoebe. And it's me, Jesse. Miss Jesse, if you're nasty. <laughs> Love you, Janet Jacks. Are you guys ready to get back into the bone zone? Do you have your Condoleezza Rices, a.k.a. condoms and lube? And by that we mean, are you ready? <laughs> because we are back with some boner episodes. Over the summer, we'll be bringing you episodes featuring the best shit that you didn't hear in season three. Yeah, and we're kicking off this with 100% badass female comics like Marcella Aguayo and Brooke Van Poplin. This just was part of our L.A. shows. And yes. they were so funny. And I have to give a special shout out to Marcella because she was sick and she didn't cancel. She still showed up. That's lit. And she crushed it. That's lit. So thanks so much for doing that, boo. That's I appreciate That's like it. something that the Obamas would do. You know what I mean? <laughs> like be sick and show up and do it anyway. Yeah, I think they would all do it. Let's get started with this episode. Oh, yeah, baby. Why you lie? This act that we're going to bring up to the stage, she's very, very funny. You've seen her a bunch of times at midnight. She's killing it all over the scene. Please get up for Marcella Aguero! Keep it going uh, for Jessica and, and for Phoebe. Uh, all right, what's up? Uh, my name is Marcella. I'm very tall for a woman. Let's fucking talk about it. 
not waste anybody's time. I'm 6'2". Um, Wu is correct, thank you. Uh, I'm very proud of my height. I'm wearing heels right now, because fuck it, right? I'm already up here. Yeah. Women are always very supportive of my height. They're like, yes, bitch, work it. Yes, bitch, yes, girl, work that shit. Work that high, work them heels. It's the men, men. Men are always like, oh, why are you wearing heels? Why, why, why are you wearing them? You don't need high heels. Why are you wearing high heels? If you don't need them, why are you wearing them? And it's like, dude, if you could add two inches to your dick, you would. Leave me alone. I'm Latina, I'm a proud Latina. Latinos in the house. Um, I had this woman, when she found out I was Latina, she was like, both your parents? Because you're so tall, you don't look Latina. I was like, you don't look dumb as fuck, bitch, but here we are. Both your parents, dumb as fuck? You come from a long line of dumb fucks, you dumb fucking... But don't talk to me. I don't like talking to people. Don't talk to me. Uh, I'm dating my first white devil. I mean, white dude. And, and I'm, I'm super militant. That's how I was raised. And so a lot of my black and brown friends are, like, upset with me, lecturing me and shit. I was um, texting with one of my homegirls, and she was like, I was like, we're going to hang out. So we're texting, right? And I, I say, can't wait to see you later, it's gonna be grand. So she says, bitch, grand? That mayonnaise motherfucker is rubbing off on you. You're gonna start using words like Fortnite? I was like, oh shit, my bad, it's gonna be popping, see ya. But he and I, we had a breakthrough. We had a breakthrough the other night. Uh, I don't like talking about sex on stage, so uh, forgive me for being crass. Um, <laughs> he was going down on me. And the spirit of the ruckus came over me. So I yelled out, Wu-Tang! And he looked up. And he goes, ain't nothing to fuck with. I was like, yeah. He's a keeper, bitch. <laughs> the feminists are in the house, right? All the feminists are here. Yep. I'm, a, I'm a proud feminist. Um, I did a show in Chicago not that long ago. 400 people, I asked if there were feminists in the house. No one said a word. I know, I was, I know, I was very disappointed, uh, but I get it. Today's feminism is really fucked up. Women say shit like, I'm a feminist, so I don't cook. I'm a feminist, I hate kids. I'm a feminist, I don't care what I look like. And it's like, since when did fighting for women's equal rights mean you turn into a deadbeat dad? <laughs> here's the thing, uh, here's the thing about feminism is there's, there's no such thing as a perfect feminist. There isn't, every feminist has their flaw. I know my biggest flaw, and I can admit this, my biggest flaw as a feminist is that I love rap music. I do, I love it. Underground, mainstream, I love rap, and it's hard to listen to. It's hard to listen to sometimes, because as we all know, rap has a lot of hateful lyrics towards women. I feel at the worst when I'm out dancing. I feel like I'm being pulled in two directions. <laughs> I was out dancing the other night, and I hear over the loudspeaker, damn right, bitch, fuck my wife, you my slut for life. I was all, <gasps> Did he just say, <laughs> fuck my wife? What has misogyny done to the sanctity of marriage? God damn, this song is good. Ah! <laughs> oh, that classic juvenile hit comes on. I'm sweating in my drawers, yeah, logging hard, yeah. I gonna walk it like a dog, yeah. I break you off, yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Did he just say he would walk me like a dog? 
I mean, if it was to this beat, I might let him back. And what's the alternative, right? What the fuck is the alternative? The most feminist rap song ever made ever. Tupac, keep your head up. He says in the song, because a man cannot make one. He has no right to tell a woman when and where to create one. So will the real man get up? I know you're fed up, ladies, but you gotta keep your head up. Beautiful. Powerful, but you can't pussy pop on a handstand of that shit. I'm like, this feels wrong. My name is Marcella Argo. Have a good night. Two Dope Queens is supported by Blue Apron. Come and knock at our door. We've been waiting for Blue Apron, the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country that is impacting communities and households everywhere. Plus, you know where your food is actually coming from because Blue Apes has partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranches across the United States. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash queen. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash queen. Two Dope Queens is supported by Casper, an award-winning manufacturer of one premium mattress. It's engineered for supportive comfort and ships in a compact box right to your door with free shipping and returns. Casper combines high-density memory foams to create a sleep surface that contours to your body. You can order online and try it on your own home risk-free for 100 nights. Save 50 bucks on your Casper mattress by visiting casper.com slash queen and enter the promo code QUEEN. If you haven't become a member yet, that is seriously so disrespectful. We're going to need you to get on that, like, ASAP. Why? Because if 250 of you become members by June 30th, we'll unlock $25,000 from the Tao Foundation to support the show. So help us keep making you laugh. Go to tdupqueens.org slash donate or text the word QUEEN to 69866 and give in just one minute on your phone. Please and thank you, YQY. Hey, Bono. Keep this show moving right along. Yeah. How's that sound? Uh, very excited about our next act. She's so, so talented. She used to live in New York, and I miss her dearly. Aww. She's out in L.A. She has an album out on iTunes called Hard Feelings. Please give it up for Brooke Pablo! I think I'm supposed to do jokes. If there's a minute at the end, I'd like you all to touch my butt. Um, that's really, that's really what it's about. Um, let's please take in my necklace real quick. It's a tiny hand, and it's severed, and I wear it on a chain to send a message. Not grabbing any puss, okay? Just let's be clear. You know what I'm saying? Um, anyways, enough about me. Had to leave uh, New York. Couldn't ride the trains anymore. <laughs> It's fun. And um, this is before things got bad. So uh, I'm, I'm glad I got out. It's really good. I'm in therapy. Um, I do. Yeah, thank you. Do it. Do it. You guys are a little too supportive. <laughs> I'm going to leave here like, all right, I can do it. You know, uh, the world's not that easy. Okay. Tamp it down. Okay. No, I love it. I need this. But, uh, I, I definitely see my therapist once a week, and she's like, oh, you're codependent. <laughs> I was like, mm, are we sure that's what we think? Um, I would disagree, but uh, she's, she's very cool. Um, she's given me what she calls tools for dealing with my panic disorder. And um, so she taught me to calm myself down by speaking to myself in the third person. Does anyone else do this? Sure, okay, great, we know this tactic. So she had me practice. She's like, next time you're on the train and you're feeling one of your little freakouts coming on, 
you're gonna say out loud, Brooke is strong. <laughs> Brooke has never died from a panic attack. <laughs> Brooke can get through this. Thank you, right? And I was like, all right, you know? And I like walked down into the subway tunnels. I'm like, here we go. You know, and it was going pretty smooth. Like usually the first two minutes on the crowded subway are great. And let me be honest, I don't know if anyone's ever lived there. The fact that more people don't just like wake up one day and go, this is fucked, like every day. Like, I don't know why it's like just me, you know? I, like, how can it only be me? How, how? <laughs> it's you, yeah, she's like, Nadia. Everyone's just silently pretending to look at their iPad going, fuck. Um, <laughs> But uh, so, you know, it's usually two minutes into the ride where I'm like, hm, 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 here we go. And then I'm like, huh? you know, and then you're like, you're like, it's popping off, you know, when you're about to have a panic attack. And uh, like, I felt the hot feeling, you know, when you're like, here comes death. And it's just, it's such a battle. I don't mean to minimize it, but here we go. And so I was like, oh, wait, 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 wait. We've got tools. We've got tools. And I was like, Brooke is strong. Brooke has always survived a panic attack. But Brooke can't help but think maybe it's a little more crowded in here than usual today. So Brooke's just gonna rock back and forth a little bit and scratch at Brooke's chest, because that calms Brooke down when she just kind of clutches her throat and just gasps for air. Oh, some people are looking at Brooke. Brooke doesn't like it when people look at Brooke and makes Brooke go deeper into her head and experience anxiety at a higher volume. God damn it. <laughs> and then, I, then I'm usually on the floor screaming. Um, so yeah, I had to go on, had to go on the old meds. Uh, <laughs> it's helped uh, until now. But uh, it's a lot, you know? I don't know if anyone else is, like with all the atrocities in the world, please don't think I'm minimizing them. Um, but like, I can't masturbate to completion since November. Anyone else? Like, I am like unstoppable, okay? This bitch comes no matter what. And since Trump took the president, I was just like saddest vagina in the world. I can't even, I'm just like, what do we even do? Like, I don't know. On the night of the election, you know, I was like sort of dating someone and you got, got it in your head that you're like, oh, like maybe we could have like tragedy sex. Like, you know, like when you see in the movies, it looks really hot, you know? And like, I don't know if you've ever tried to have tragedy sex. Don't, uh, just don't. It's like you get going and then we both just kind of stopped and we were like, what's the point? And that is such a sad dismount, you know, when you're just like, I mean, four years, four years of this sad giner, but um, it's okay. I'm, uh, I'm traveling tomorrow, and I, I'm going back to New York City, <laughs> taking cars. Um, but uh, I have this little ritual before I travel. I like to get uh, blackout drunk and then pack my suitcase. Like, what else? Mm. <laughs> so that when I arrive to my destination and open up my suitcase, suddenly getting dressed has become an episode of Chopped. I'm like... <laughs> Oh. These are very difficult items to work with. <laughs> Shit. Like Tim Gunn appears for no reason. I don't know, go with it. It's my reality fantasy. He's like in the room, so he's like, all right, Brooke, you must put together an outfit for a job interview using a baby croc. <laughs> I don't even know where I got it. <laughs> a bikini bottom and a wool Navajo poncho, make it work. Um, thank you. And guess who got that job at the container store, this bitch. Uh, um, so I'm uh, fresh out of, I don't know, my 80th relationship. Anyways, I'm not counting. Uh, oh, it's fine, it's good, there are more out there. Um, there aren't, it's LA, I know, I'm kidding. Uh, I found a real cute one in Detroit. He uh, lives in his record store and takes a bath in a bucket, but I'll take it. Okay. Um, I'm 38, you know, pickings are slim. Uh, thank you. I'm at an age where, you know, without a doubt, I'm going to have a baby with a flat head, but whatevs. Um, so I'm like, come on, let's get this started. I need a BF now. 
But I, uh, it's crazy. Like I was in a relationship for five years, so like I've been off the market since 2011. So like I'm back out in the dating scene, just like a shitty version of Microsoft Word that you forgot to update. Like I'm still like the paperclip, you know. Um, it's just terrible. I'm out there trying to say the cool things, you know. And I, I hang out with younger dudes, and I'm always trying to be like, hey, what's up? I'm DTF. You know, I'm like, mm, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm like, you know, down to fuck, DTF. Um, you know. I'm like, or uh, OMIT, <laughs> move in together? What do you guys like? I don't know. <laughs> MMP, maybe meet parents too fast? I don't know. Like, I don't know how to behave, you know? I'll be over at a guy's house and like, we'll hook up or something. I'll be like, all right, I'm, I'm just gonna get a car and leave. And they're like, oh, you don't have to go. I'm like, oh great, I brought bags, you know? <laughs> um, I cut a key when you weren't looking. <laughs> I work fast. Um, I do. It is challenging living in Los Angeles after being in New York City. Like, New York is like a weird, like, like, like I'm not like a, you know, I'm, I'm thin, but it's like, uh, you know, because I just drink coffee and eat cigarettes sort of thing. Like, New York is like gross, unhealthy, skinny, you know? I'm like, I'm just full of rage. And it's like in L.A., you're like, oh, people have like a glow and tone, and you know? And there's like a lot of pressure. You just see it around you. And um, I don't know if you guys do this thing. Um, do you ever put on your workout clothes? And then you're like... Yeah, that feels like enough. <laughs> yeah, and then you watch eight hours of House Hunters. <laughs> International, you're like, I did it. Um, so I was like, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out what kind of exercise I want to do other than walk to get alcohol. Um, my friend was like, oh, if you want to whip your ass into shape, you should do CrossFit. And I was like, nah, right? I'm like, okay. If I do CrossFit, can you at least agree that people who do CrossFit are the Scientologists of the workout world? Right? Can you just admit that, you know? I don't know if you've seen these fucking workouts. It's like L. Ron Hubbard himself, you know, <laughs> dreamed it up. He's like, give me 50 burpees. Flip over this tractor tire. Stop talking to your family. Build me a ship. Yeah, thank you. It's wonderful. You guys have been great. I'm Brooke Van Poplin. Thanks. You just heard Brooke Van Poplin and Marcella Arguello. Tito Queens is produced by Joanna Salataroff, Jim Point, Paula Schumann, and Rachel Neal. Our team includes Joe Plord, Matt Boynton, Ed Haber, George Wellington, Isaac Jones, and Shanoa Estrada. Our theme music was composed by Jeff Brodsky. All right, I know that we've talked about the fan art on the show before, but we get so much beautiful fan art. And man, we are lucky to have listeners like you. So you can check out some of the great stuff that fans have made on our Instagram page. That's at 2 Dope Queens. And yeah, maybe you subscribe to the show, but have you rated us and left a review? I mean, it only takes a second, maybe 15 seconds tops. So just do it. We would really appreciate it. That's all for now. Ta-ta. Okay, Mr. Belvedere. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Hold on. I just got an email about my YouTube tickets. You don't need to CC me on that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tito Queens is supported by Casper, an award-winning manufacturer of one premium mattress, combining high-density memory foams that contour to your body. Try risk-free for 100 nights and save $50 by visiting casper.com slash queen and enter the promo code queen.